President Barkin, good to have you on this morning. Thanks for having me. Well, we've just gotten, uh, obviously, a week of relief uh, on some inflation measures, naturally, CPI, uh, PPI index, uh, University of Michigan sentiment, the inflation expectations did moderate to some degree. That follows the New York Fed survey in a similar direction. How does this all uh, filter into your view of whether the Fed is on course to get inflation back to target, what it means for policy in the near term? Well, Wednesday's data, the PPI data yesterday was all very welcome, so we're happy to see uh, inflation start to move down. And I'd like to see a, a period of sustained uh, inflation under control. Um, and until we do that, I think we're just going to have to continue to move rates into restrictive territory. A uh, period of sustained uh, declines in inflation, I guess you mean, so multiple months. Um, how, how are we sure. going to know when we're there? Well, you'd like to see inflation running at our target, which is 2 percent on the PCE. And so I'd like to see it running at our target for some time. Uh, you say we need to get shorter term rates into restrictive territory. Do you uh, agree that at the moment we're in the in the zone of neutral? And uh, I, I suppose uh, how do you think the economy is set up to absorb that move into restrictive territory? Well, you know, there's a wide range of estimates uh, of neutral. And so a lot of times you learn about it when you're uh, when you're doing it. But I think uh, there's still more to come to get into restrictive uh, territory. Uh, the economy uh, seems to be weathering it well. There are obviously sectors that are more impacted uh, than others. But if you look at the jobs report um, and you look at the other data we've been getting over the last several weeks, it still seems like the economy uh, is in a fundamentally sound uh, uh, place. Tom, that's uh, my question there, is this idea that if the labor market is so strong, if there is such tight supply in the labor market, does that present a floor um, and present a challenge to the Fed's ability to actually get to that 2 percent level in controlling inflation? Even though wages haven't kept up with the pace of inflation, it's still a very, very strong labor market right now. Well, I guess I just start with inflation and a tight labor market doesn't have to cause inflation. We certainly had a tight labor market in 2018 and 2019. Um, and inflation is being driven by commodity prices, as you know. It's being driven by supply chain issues, as you know, and it's being driven by demand. And so um, as we move rates and try to normalize uh, demand, hopefully we'll get some help from those other two uh, lanes as well. And then it wouldn't be inconsistent with a tight labor market at all. Tom, um, we've seen in recent weeks, obviously, the equities uh, have rallied, credit spreads have come in, absolute yield levels uh, are also moderating off their highs. In other words, financial conditions have loosened up significantly. In fact, by some measures in, in recent weeks, it's been uh, a pretty extreme loosening of those financial conditions. Does that itself influence Fed policy? In other words, do you feel as if that's counterproductive to the Fed's uh, you know, effort to uh, restrain inflation from here? Well, I think we are trying to influence financial conditions in what we do. The, the metric that I look at is real rates. I want to see real rates across the curve sustain in positive uh, territory. And that has two pieces to it. One is obviously the rates and the second is the inflation expectations. So those things, uh, I think, have to move uh, together. I think we're on the brink of moving real rates into positive territory across the curve. We need to sustain it there. And we need to follow through on some of the expectations that are out there in terms of rate path in order to uh, to keep it there. But I think you have to look at what the market does in the context of uh, inflation expectations.